welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you for coming to today's presentation. Uh, just the quick backstory on this presentation uh, is about two weeks ago that uh, the idea for this presentation came to fruition. And so uh, quick context, myself and Dari, we are we're on a, uh, a networking app called Lunch Club. And uh, we connected and we realized that there was a lot of shared interests in terms of things that we we're focused on and things that we want to do. And so over the past two weeks, you know, it was a, it's at times grueling to put together a lot of the marketing material to really put this webinar for you together. And so, um, you know, today we're going to have myself, Dari and Mike, all who will be presenting on today's topic, which is to source, interview and select top talent for your HVAC company. And so just to set the context for today, I want to share with you a few stats. Uh, approximately right now, there is 80% of U.S. construction companies who have said that they can't find qualified workers to work on their projects. And a big reason for that is leading into the next point, which is that the average HVAC professional's age is approximately 54 years old. And so at 54 years old, um, these professionals, they're expecting to retire within about 10 years and so as you can probably see, there is a differential in demographic. There is more people leaving than are coming into the field. And because of that, there is an unmet need for qualified HVAC technicians. Um, but also on the flip side of that as well, is that not only is there an unmet need, it means that those that are currently in the field will be in greater demand and that there is a greater amount of competition. And so with all of this, you know, I've um, you know, we've been cold calling, we've been talking to, we've been having strategy sessions with HVAC contractors around the country. And one of the biggest problems that they're telling us is that, John, we don't necessarily need more business right now. What we need is we need more people, finding the right people who can actually help us handle the jobs that we're, we're bringing on. And so I actually, uh, there, was a, there was a poll that had been done on Facebook. And this was, a, this was an informal poll, as you'll see from some of the answers, but um, a, a few contractors were asked, you know, what are some of the biggest problems that you are facing in your company today? And so here's some of the, uh, some of these were edited, but uh, this was the unfiltered things that they said. Uh, the first thing they said, not enough time in the day. Number two, finding good, good people that want to work. And then number three, people, F bleeping people. Number four, if I could clone myself, that would take away my struggles from day to day. And then five, I constantly overbook my schedule and spread myself too thin. You know, at the root of these problems, it's people, right? If you have the right people and the right seats with a shared vision, you can do anything in your contracting business. But if you're short on time, if you don't have the right people in the organization, if you don't have the right culture, it is very difficult to grow in the way that you want to. And so that's kind of why this, uh, this presentation was put together. And before we um, jump off into the speakers, I want to talk through a few things. And so the first thing is I want to share a quote. And it's, uh, you know, when people are financially invested, they want to return. And when they are emotionally invested, they want to contribute. And so it's not just getting someone to fill the seat in your organization, but it's how do you find someone that fits the culture of your organization and wants to be a part of it because it's not just sourcing them, but what if they leave, you know, the, the cost of uh, an employee leaving in the HVAC industry can be upwards of $18,000 to have to train and retrain and find someone new. And so with that, I did want to ask, and this is not something that you have to put in the comments or in the chat, but you know, you're spending some time with us today. It's going to be about an hour. We're going to go through three um, small mini presentations to give you a full lay of the land. But you, know, you want to ask yourself, why are you here? Right? We have 24 hours in the day and you're spending this hour with us. But why are you here? And what are you looking to take away from today's topic on hiring? Um, and I'm going to pause for uh, 15 seconds just so that you can think it through. But it's, it's important. You always want to make sure that whenever you're going into anything, what is your takeaway? What, what, what question do you want to get answered? Do you want a resource? Do you want a person to be connected to? What are you looking to take away? And I'll pause for a few moments.
Awesome. And so, you know, I hope that you were able to think through um, why you want what you want to take away from today and uh, make sure to write it down. And, you know, you since you're spending this time, get that out of this presentation today. And so uh, for today's agenda, I just want to give you, you know, what is the breakdown um, of this hour together? And so the way that's going to be broken down is uh, first, we're going to go to Dari and she is going to be sharing with you guys the best practices for sourcing, interviewing and hiring. And that first segment will be 15 minutes. Next will be Mike Kassler, and he will be sharing with you a presentation on your options for human resources. So what's available on the landscape for you? And then finally, uh, it'll be myself, and I'll be sharing with you how to build your own HVAC candidate sourcing system online. And, and after that, we'll have some Q&A, and we'll also be sharing uh, a really cool resource that you'll be able to take away from this presentation. And so um, it's going to be a quick breakdown, and uh, yeah, let's head right into it for today. And so for our first speaker, uh, I want everyone to meet Dari. And just for a short bio, uh, Dari is an accomplished human resources professional. She has 30 years of well-rounded HR experience built on an in-depth professional knowledge and the ability to efficiently manage tasks, small and large. Uh, her specialties include California, hospitality, employee investigations, labor relations, large-scope project management, employee morale, team building, leadership training and development, wage and compensation design execution, and working with hourly entry-level teams. And so without further ado, I'll pass over the, the screen to you, Dari, and I'll let you get on started. Uh, welcome, Dari. Thank you so much for the nice intro. I think, yep, there we go. All right. Screen look good? Good to go. Okay, perfect. So thank you everyone for you know giving us your time today. I know time, time is a valuable commodity. So we, we appreciate you spending it with us. So we are hoping we can give you some great nuggets, tips, tricks. And again, we've got a great handout for you uh, to accompany this. You know, part of it is hiring, part of it's retaining. So finding them, hiring them, keeping employees. So this whole program, this whole program today is going to focus on uh, ideas for hiring, sourcing, and hiring them. We'll have to do another follow-up for keeping them. But let's talk about this. So it is so challenging. It's not just construction. It's any industry that has a lot of hires that could be considered maybe entry level, entry level or manual labor, hospitality, service industries, uh, landscaping, um, staffing companies, everyone is struggling. And there's so many reasons over this, you know, pa the pandemic of why that is. But at the end of the day, really what companies are having to do are really rethink old hiring practices, just, you know, posting a Craigslist ad, and, you know, for five bucks or three, that's not going to cut it anymore. It's just you. There's so many people competing for this same pool of pop, uh, pool of employees. So companies are really having to think and get really get creative and relooking at their benefits they're offering. What can they do to, you know, be better than their competition, be more attractive? So if you've got one employee looking at five potential employers, how do they look at you first? Um, one of the things that I'm really recommending with a lot of companies that I'm working with, I'm doing a lot of hospitality and service oriented companies right now is let's grow our own. So are we willing to take fresh out of high school um, or maybe they're still in high school and really put them through um, like apprentice or uh, internship programs or just do on the job training and really spend more time upfront training them than just expecting people to come in with, you know, X, Y, Z number of years of experience. The other big factor that really thinking about is um, hiring bonuses are out there a lot. I, I watch a lot of job ads, see what companies are doing but not just hiring bonuses. So hiring bonuses, that might be attractive for sure, but we want them to stay a long time. It's not worth your time to have them come in for 30 days, do training and they disappear. So creating a tiered stay bonus. If you stay through the end of the summer, if you stay through the end of the project, you're gonna get a little bit now, but you're gonna get a big chunk of money at the end if you stay. So that is a very nice and appealing incentive. And then if you're gonna spend recruiting dollars, create an employee referral, like make it really good. $500, if you bring in somebody we hire, 250 at hire, 250 at six months or at the end of the project. So really make it good, but have a future component to it so your own employees are helping people stick. So let's talk a little bit about what I brought today. So this is me. So my name is Dari D'Souza. I opened my own consulting company, so it's D'Souza. 
professional human resources group, and that's my contact information. Um, what is an HR consultant? I get that a lot. If people haven't worked with HR consultants and you're saying, why, how, how does this help you? So an HR consultant is not an employee. You're not putting them on payroll. It's a 1099 person. And you can contract for as much volume or as little volume as you need. So maybe you just have one project that you need to hire 20 people for or five people for, or you need a new office admin um, that you need to get hired. You can hire them for a project, or let's say you have um, ICE has given you a notice and you have an ICE inspection. Well, now you need somebody to go through all your I-9s, do an audit, et cetera, and work through that notice. So there could be specific project work that needs to be done or tasks or let's say you want an ongoing relationship where you want to have a certain number of hours per month. So you and the um, HR consultant, and it can be an individual like myself, or there are small consultant groups that you sign up with the group and multiple people are available for assistance. So that kind of support. And that's really, and at the end of the day, it's financial support. Yes, it costs money to get a consultant, but they're going to be able to audit and source and look at what you're doing and your, all your labor practices and make sure that they are, you are reducing your compliance. You can't eliminate compliance because you know, I'm in California, especially there's so much litigation and it's going to happen. But if you have your, you know, I's dotted and your T's crossed, then you are going to be able to make sure that you can defend yourself in the best, uh, best way possible. So it will help reduce. So HR consultants are really good business partners. So they can be partners to you because you aren't an HR person. You want, you are professionals and you know your business and you just want to do the business of running your business. That's what you should be doing. That's probably why you became an entrepreneur and started your own business because you liked what you were doing. You didn't like paperwork and HR tasks and hiring and interviewing. That wasn't fun. Um, so we can partner with either on-site um, office managers or an office assistant and we can partner with them to get these HR tasks done. Um, sometimes I partner with on-site HR people, journalists or managers as well. We um, can partner with a preferred um, employer organization, which you're going to hear a little bit about what that is, uh, Mike Kessler, a little bit later. Um, we can also partner with a staffing agency. Um, so we can partner to get all those things pulled through to free up as much of your time as possible in getting staff on board. So kind of maybe really bringing it down to, can we bring you just final candidates? You interview the final candidate and poof, we'll hire them. So bring up your time to manage all the other things you have to do. So kind of like a, a consultant snapshot. So recruiting, you want to make sure that when you, if you're going to go with an HR consultant, you need to ask, not all HR consultants will do recruiting. So make sure that you ask, knows that, know that it's going to free up your time. And even if you like recruiting, you, maybe you need, you, maybe you need some more time for it so we can take other HR tasks off your plate. So you could spend more time doing that. And again, you always want to have a contract and do an agreed scope of work. It's, you know, for a certain number of hours, a certain number of days, or maybe just for the duration of a project. And then not every consultant is the same. So every single individual or group or agency, they're going to have different specialties. So you really want to make sure you, you know, do a little research, at least an internet research or ask for some referrals and make sure what this person had, what they're, what they're skilled at is something that you actually need. So certain candidates, otherwise known as your second full-time job. <laughs> so let's explore this a little bit. So why use a consultant? So let's imagine if you look on the left-hand uh, side of the screen where uh, we have our little scenario in white. So you have a new project contracted and you're planning it. It could take about two months and you need six workers, but all of your workers are deployed in other projects. And might, in fact, you might be short-staffed on all of your deployments. So end of the day, you need to hire some workers. But it's also time to pay quarterly taxes and you have a supply chain issue and you're trying to source materials for new places and your foreman just got sick and it's going to be out two weeks and a salesperson has a lead and, 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 ah, you know, it's all there. But on top of that, just to get the first bullet of the six workers, and that's critical, right, to getting this new project done, you have to do all of these things. Write your ad, place your ad, where am I going to place it, review applications, screen, 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 50 people apply that have no business applying for this job to begin with. They obviously didn't look at the certifications needed. How do you get through all of that just to get to the one or two people that you're going to hire or the five people you hire and the two people that show up? So that is, it, it's just too much. And after how many 15-hour workdays in a row are you just exhausted? 
So here is an idea of where a consultant might come, come in. So what if, same scenario of all the busy things, what if you were able to email or call your consultant and said, okay, I need six people. Here's the rate of pay. Here's the job. Here's the start. Here's the end. Go. And this person has been partnered with you. So they know your company. They know where you like to run ads from. They have all your job descriptions, or maybe they helped you write those job descriptions. So they really know what qualifications needed, or you're willing to do training. So they're going to put together a boot camp and do some um, rapid training to skill up maybe people graduating from a, you know, some kind of a job skills program in your area, and they're going to train them, teach them, and get them on board. So you can hand that off, and even if it's just bringing it down to source through all the many, many applicants that shouldn't be applied, get me those couple, get schedule down to those top tier candidates, and schedule my interviews. Then all you have to do is show up for the interview or phone, show up for the interview. That's all you have, and that frees up your time. You know it's happening, you know it's being taken care of, and you just have to come in it for that final hiring decision. That's how that can help you. Something that's nice with an HR consultant is HR consultants are good HR practitioners, so they can actually do a lot of different things versus maybe like a staffing agency, which is just going to do the hiring component. And that could be helpful too, but so you could get more bang for your buck. So that's how a consultant can help you. I've listed here a couple different things that, you know, additional services that an HR consultant can provide. Some of it might be writing job descriptions. You might know up in your head exactly what you want your workers, what skills they want, and what you want for an attitude and all those pieces, but taking the time to sit there and type it off into a legally sound, meaningful job description, that takes time. So that might be something. Um, I think one thing that's good with uh, HR consultants and just HR in general is we're really good about knowing the market and connecting with veterans group, trade organizations, community organizations, uh, schools, things like that, and making continuous relationships. And maybe, you know, if there's a way to do internships, we'll do internships for your people because then really good interns, you swipe them and they become really good employees. So a lot of different things um, in addition to just some of the recruiting support services that a consultant can do. And so that is my time today. Um, are there any questions I can answer? I see a couple things in chat that you guys let me know if there's, a, if there's time to answer. And we'll go from there. Awesome. Yeah, everyone just continue to add your questions in the chat. Um, just so we stay on time, I'm going to, um, yeah, we'll save all the questions for the end, but please okay. continue to add them in. Um, but also, I, I just want to say that, um, Dari, from your presentation, one of my big takeaways, uh, and this is something that, you know, we're doing in our organization right now, is we're looking for uh, an account manager. And I love the idea of an employee referral bonus. Uh, yeah. So, you know, to incentivize folks to actually come in and identify other good people that could be in the organization. Because you know, the thing that we found in our organization is that good people know good people and uh, would love to continue to bring on more of those folks. Yes smart, smart, smart money. And you make it generous. Don't do $50. Make it like $500 because the, then your people are going to be like, wait, $500, that's real money. And they're going to look for people. and But they're going to bring in people they want to be proud of because their name's on it. And they're going to be working next to them. So they're not going to just bring in whomever. They're going to be in people that are like, yeah, that's my guy or that's my gal. So, you know, it's good. And then put the stay component because then they're going to help keep them on track. Like, no, 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 you do that. You're going to get fired. Let's, yeah, I want my bonus at the end of six months. And so they'll actually kind of help keep them, in, uh, stay on track and stay employed. <laughs> Awesome. And then we do have time for, there was a question just asked by Hamza. He said, uh, hi, Dari, can a consultant help you fire people in addition to hiring them? Yes, that is actually, that's the, you know, the tougher thing. Hiring, it, that's pleasant. You're bringing on people, you're giving them careers, firing them, not as fun. So I do two things. One is what is leading up to the termination? Maybe you want to give somebody a written documentation, like a warning saying, hey, this is what you did. If you continue to do this, you're going to, you're not going to work for me anymore. Um, or just here's all the things I've done. I'm ready to fire this person. And maybe that's not your comfort level. And that is something that mo many consultants, that's the service I provide. I will go on site, meet with the person and make sure we pay them correctly, give them all the paperwork and answer any questions that they have and handle that. Cause you know, that's not a comfortable thing to do. And I get that. Yeah. It's, it's never an easy thing to, to let go of someone. And um, that's, and that's, that's an amazing thing that a consultant will do. And so 
Awesome. Well, just to stay on track, thank you, Dari, for your time. And um, now I'm going to um, share the screen and introduce Mike. Uh, and Mike will be our next speaker. And Mike Kassler, he is a business performance advisor with Insperity in the San Diego, California market, where he assists small to medium-sized businesses run better and grow faster. Uh, Michael possesses vast business leadership experience running divisions and regions with more than 150 employees and greater than 400 million in annual revenue. In addition to Michael's exper expertise in human resources, he has experience in print and digital marketing, direct mail, e-payments, as well as the wireless and hospitality industry. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, Mike, and uh, thank you for your time today. Well, th <clears throat> thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Um, I'll go ahead and get my screen shared as well. Um, I will let those of you HVAC folks know I do have some exposure to your business from uh, worked with a lot of HVAC companies and even HVAC uh, agencies when I was in uh, the, the print and direct mail industry for, for about four and a half years. So uh, I have a good idea of some of the challenges that you face. But specifically what we're going to talk about today is you know, what are the resources that are out there to help you run your business and what are the different models that you could consider? And um, there's not necessarily one right uh, model for the industry. It really is where you are in, in your business. And, and uh, so we'll take a look at those in some detail. Quickly, um, well, there we go. Um, so just real quick, a little bit about Insperity for those who may not know. We're founded in 1986. We're about 35 years old now. Uh, we've grown to a $4.3 billion corporation. We have 80 plus offices across the country and, and do have uh, customers in, in all 50 states at this point. At this point. We are uh, on the New York uh, Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol of NSP if you wanna check us out. And we are what's called a certified PEO, a CPEO. And I'll explain a little bit more about that here in just a moment. Um, before we get into the, the different options that are available for you, I do wanna share with you, these are the most common mistakes that we see at, uh, from an insperity's perspective, the clients make and where we're able to help them out the most. So these are compliance mistakes businesses make that they revolve around discrimination and harassment, hiring and terminations, employee records as far as regulations on you know, what you keep, what you can share, what you can't, misclassifications, you misclassify as an exempt versus non-exempt or a 1099 employee versus what needs to be a, a permanent employee. Uh, around wages and, of course, around family and medical leave. There's all types of compliance issues that you have to manage. So how do you do it? What are your options to do that? So we're going to take it. There's actually four different models of human resources that you can use to, to manage your business. And how we're going to break this down is we're actually going to draw this line of liability, if you will. And everything we're going to show you below this line is the business owner's liability and responsibility. Everything above would belong to the vendor if you're using a vendor to help you out. Um, when we talk about liabilities, really what we're talking about is administration and compliance issues, but we're also talking about costs, both the negotiations of, of what the services cost as well as how to contain the cost uh, for those services long term. So the first model we're going to look at is what's called traditional employment. And that's what most businesses are on today. All right, so this is where you have complete control and direction of your employees and your company. You are, if you're providing benefits for your employees, you are uh, going out to a broker to get that. You're also brokering out your workers' compensation and employer practice liability insurance. Um, and you're using some type of platform or technology for your payroll and payroll taxes. Uh, and then you have HR issues, which are all the people issues that you have to, to work around with. And you can do that in various ways, but one may be to hire a consultant like Dari to help you. She can help you hiring and uh, unfortunately firing when that, if it does become an issue. Uh, some companies keep a lawyer on retainer. They just wanna be able to reach out to them and say, we had this issue come up, what's the right thing for us to do? Uh, they may be a, there may be a flat fee for that, but there may be additional fees if it gets into to anything more than just a phone call for advice. Or they could have an employee that they bring on board and the employee actually is, is trained in HR and, and hopefully uh, current in their trainings and, and can help you avoid uh, any uh, upcoming issues. But all of these folks are still acting agents on the company's behalf. So they have not taken on the liability. So they still fall below the liability line. And the things that you have to make sure are taken care of when it's uh, in the traditional employment model 
you have to have compliance with all the different agencies, Department of Labor, IRS, EEOC, OSHA, and then all the regulations that are come, going to come from the alphabet soup of different uh, uh, company uh, regulation uh, uh, entities that are out there that you have to it, it, uh, follow their, their guidance and direction. So there's a lot to manage when you do it other than traditional employment. Now, on the complete opposite end, there's just a staffing model where you go out to a staffing agency and they have complete direction control of the employees. They're just, uh, you're telling them I need 10 people to do this and need it for this amount of time. Most businesses don't use this model for their core employees, but they may supplement uh, with occasional temp person here or there. Um, but it really is one where you have no control over the staffing. You could have somebody you love and they take them and put them on a different job because they have a new client they're trying to impress. And then somewhere in between that is what where we, um, co-employment or a PEO model falls. If, if you're not familiar with a PEO model, that's a professional employer organization. And co-employment is the key phrase there. So you actually, the, the PEO will be the employer of record. Um, and what that means is you still can... Uh, maintain complete direction and control. So you decide who you're going to hire and who you're going to fire. You're just going to get guidance on how to do those things. Um, the uh, vendor will take on the liability of payroll and payroll taxes and, and filings and everything that goes along with that. They will also manage the benefits for you. So they're, they're either, depending on the type of PEO it is, they're either brokering out those benefits on your behalf, or I'll share a little bit with you about how Insperity does it here in just a second because we're a little bit different. The same thing applies with workers' compensation. They're acquiring that for you, brokering that out for you, or in our case, bringing you onto our actual policy. And then the same thing with your EPLI insurance. Um, what is shared in this model where there's liability for both parties here is all the HR issues because the PEO is going to be providing you with guidance and with um, you know all the, the uh, latest and greatest uh, compliance issues that you need to follow and, and certainly giving you the advice on, on how to manage it. But you as a business owner still have to put those policies into effect and manage them. So they can give you all the, the uh, uh, advice on how to do it, but if you don't do it, then you're still gonna have some responsibility in, in that type of relationship. Now, the reason there's two models here is there's another model that looks very, very similar except for the benefits. So you can go out and outsource everything to a PEO, but still keep the benefits in, in house with a, uh, a brokered relationship that you have. And you know, maybe you've got a, a brother-in-law that's in, in the uh, insurance industry and you don't wanna uh, take business away from them. So there's, you, you can do that. Now, not all PEOs are, are uh, built alike. Uh, they do have different offerings, um, but one of the benefits to the PEO is you're typically gonna be able to acquire better benefits and in, in many cases like Fortune 500 level benefits at, at reduced rates because they have the economies of scale and the buying power to be able to get better policies at, at lower rates. So if you take this, this model on the, you know, the second one in where you're still brokering out benefits, you may give up some of that. So you may wind up either not getting as good of benefits or paying a little bit more than what you uh, normally would through your, your PEO. The other areas where there can be real differences are you have regional PEOs, you have national PEOs. So there's ones that are just specific to a state or to a specific region. And that's their level of expertise, right? That's where they know what the regulations and compliance challenges are, and they know how to, to manage to those. But if you were to grow outside of that, they may not be the right fit for you. Uh, and then there's other differences as well. Like I say, some of these PEOs will, will broker their benefits and, and uh, workers' comp and all. They'll just go out every year, they're going out and, and repricing it on your behalf. Um, and that's where Inspiri is a little different. We're the only PEO that we actually bring clients onto our own personal benefits plan and workers' compensation policy. So you get the benefit of going on to the same benefits plan that, that I get as an employee, uh, and you get Fortune 500 level benefits at a uh, significantly reduced rate. And then we're able to save money on the workers' comp as well. And the, the hope from a PEO model is that the savings that you're going to get on the benefits and, and other uh, insurance offerings will offset the administration its administrative fees that they're going to charge you. So that's a little bit of the structure there. In addition for us, we also provide recruiting at no charge for what we call the, the first three levels. So we're not going to go recruit a, a CEO at no charge, but you know, for your, if you're 
bringing in non-senior level folks. And right now we're offering that at no charge as well as part of our offering. And so you need to research this, the PEOs to see what all they do offer if that's something that you decide you're going to consider. Um, that really is the different four different models. So what I would tell you, these, these are some of the reasons why people seek out a PEO or why they come to us. But, you know, Dari mentioned we weren't really covering how to keep uh, people. But this is one of the areas where uh, the right benefits plan can help you not just recruit, but retain top talent. You know, people leave jobs because benefits are not doesn't meet the needs of their expectations, right? So they, they'll look at it and say, I, this other company's offering me the same money, but much better benefits. So it's, I'm gonna make the, the jump. So we can help companies with that, uh, get you the, the big company benefits and streamline everything for you. But then the other big reason that they come to a PEO model is to reduce that employer related liability. So if there are claims against the, the company your PEO is, is the one that's going to manage those claims for you. So they're going to, if there's EEOC, EEOC claims, they're going to be the ones that manage through the entire process. They, they're not responsible for wage and hour claims, but they still will help walk you through the process and help you manage the claim to where you can defend yourself as best possible. But they do take on equal responsibility for other claims uh, financially as well. So it does uh, eliminate a lot of the liability and risk that you have as a business operator. And with that, I'll open it up to see if there are any questions for me. Awesome, Mike. So uh, there is a question in the chat. Uh, the question is, uh, would it be better to hire my own HR instead of a consultant? I don't know if that's the, a question best fit for you or? Well, that's one actually Daria and I both might be able to take a stab at, but I can tell you that again, it really depends on where you are as a business. So if you need, if you need a specific thing done, but then you're managing everything well beyond that, then that's probably the best time to reach out to somebody like Dari and say, hey, I, I have a project I need help with. Um, if you've got ongoing needs that, that are, you know, you're gonna have to continue to, ma to manage and you're gonna have to reach out to a consultant every month, well then it's time to look at probably other options at that point in time. Yeah, I would agree. It's kind of the number of employees. Once you start getting towards 100 employees and more, then you're probably gonna need more services and that might better than better to hire your own HR person. The other thing that's a little bit of challenge that you have to decide is how senior level of an HR person. So an HR person for $18 an hour is gonna be a new generalist. They're not gonna have a depth of experience. There's hopefully you're, we're gonna, you would target somebody who is resourceful and knows where to go find all this information, but it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit more challenging. If you want somebody to senior level, you're going to pay, you know, 70, depending on where you are in the country, you're going to pay 70, 75 and up. So it really is about um, your finances, how much money you want to put towards that HR function and how big you are. And that's where outsourcing to a PEO, again, may be the right answer for you, because if you're going to spend that much money on that level of professional, then you, it may make more sense to outsource it all, not have to worry about hiring that person again if they move on to something else. Um, and again, even that level of expertise, are they compliant in all the states? One thing I didn't touch on is, you know, one thing COVID has taught us is that uh, the remote employee work, uh, workforce isn't going away. Uh, now in HVAC, obviously you've got to have feet on the street and folks at homes and businesses, but you may have a scenario where you have an office manager or office employee who's just fantastic and the, uh, spouse gets a job in a different state and you want to keep that person on board because you know they can do the job remotely. Um, now you have to worry about managing to that state's regulations and compliance issues as well. So other challenges to, to keep in mind. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. And I think that we will have to pass the rest of the questions to the end of the presentation. Um, but thank you, Mike, for your time. And I hope everyone learned something about a PEO and how they could apply to your business. And so I'll share my screen again and we will wrap up. So the final speaker, um, he may look familiar, uh, <laughs> is myself. <laughs> and so just a quick introduction. Uh, so I'm the Director of Business Development of Pollyanna and we are based in Alexandria, Virginia. And what we do is we work hand in hand with HVAC entrepreneurs to re-envision their marketing online and become market leaders in their service areas. 
And so one difference between myself and the other speakers is that I am not an HR professional and I'm focused more on the marketing of, uh, of a position online. And so um, bringing that to my slide, uh, so the title of my section will be to build your own HVAC candidate sourcing system. Source new installers, technicians, dispatchers, and customer service representatives on demand. And the way that it's going to be a unique angle, the way that we're going to approach it. And, um, you know, I'll go through first, I'll go through some of the mistakes that we've seen. And also I'll transition to what are some of the strategies that you could use, which will be applying some of the insights from before, um, but uh, specific to your online strategy. Okay, so I'm um, a little bit about who we are. Um, that's myself and the team. Um, you know, uh, as I mentioned again, we are a digital marketing company, and you know, we complete we provide a complete suite of uh, online services, um, accessible websites, uh, SEO, Google Ads, or targeting, email marketing, email text automation, and even have a component for an inbound call center. And so, we are members of the Air Conditioning Contractors of America, uh, Entrepreneurs Organization Accelerator, and also the Seven Figure Agency. And so with that, um, I do now want to transition to the content, and I want to talk about the six mistakes you'll make marketing your job opening online. And so, you know, you might recognize these as things that you might have done in the past or things that you can now sidestep these landmines that you could sidestep for the future. And so for the first mistake, um, the first thing that we're going to see is there's going to be a lack of clarity on job requirements. And so that might be on your end in knowing exactly what position and what requirements are needed for that position, if you are unable to properly communicate it, um, understand on your own and what that looks like, it'll be tough to promote that online. And so that's mistake number one. Mistake number two, and this is a big one, it's an uncompetitive job package. It doesn't matter how well that you can market, you can get in front of all the people that you want, but if you have an uncompetitive job package, it's going to be very difficult to attract, um, attract candidates. And so there is a, a funny saying that is out there, um, which reminds me of, of, uh, of, of this mistake. And it's that it's very difficult to polish a turd. And uh, basically what that means is that, you know, if, you, if, if your job package, if you have low pay, there's no benefits, then no, no, one wants, no one will want to work. And so it doesn't matter how your marketing is, you need to have a solid job package. Mistake number three, uh, not being proactive when filling a hiring need. Um, we see this all the time with HVAC contractors, you know, they're busy, they got to hop on jobs, they got to work on installs, and you know, they, just, they just don't got enough time to fill the positions that they need. And so when they get to that point during busy season, let's say during the summer, they're looking to grow their business, they hadn't taken the time to cultivate the pipeline. They are now reactive versus proactive to the need at hand. And so that's a missed opportunity. And so you don't want to be in that position where you're on your heels. You want to be on your toes, forward and proactive, ready to fill that hiring need. Mistake number four, not properly qualifying candidates. Um, you know, there's, there's ways you can set systems up, and I'll, I'll talk about that later in the presentation. But if you aren't properly qualifying who's coming in, you're going to be entertaining a lot of candidates. You know, if anyone has been on Indeed before and put a job listing out there, you're going to get 400, 500 applicants, and you got to go through all those applications, look, look at their resumes and like 50 to 60 to 70% of those folks aren't even qualified to, to participate, but you're wasting your time. And so you need filter systems to get you out of wasting your time with uh, qualifying. Mistake number five, lack of follow-up. You might get a lead of someone who could be a great installer, but if you're not actively following up with them because you might be busy and that's completely understandable, you know, that good person is going to be lost, right? Good people, you know, they have their choice of where to work. And so if you're not on it, if you're not proactive, you're going to miss out on good people that can help you grow your organization. And the last mistake is manually doing all the work. So, you know, if you're manually responding to every single message, if you are, you know, you know, just taking, taking the time, you're already busy and you're, you're doing all the texting, you're doing all the follow-ups. It's, it's a mistake, right? Time is money and we want to spend our time most effectively. And so that's a big mistake that we'll see. And so transitioning from there, um, you know, we, do, we don't have a ton of time in this presentation, but I want to share with you four online options that you can begin to source your candidates. And a lot of these things are things that you could do already and they're assets that you could develop, but you just aren't properly leveraging yet. 
And that's why I'm excited because this is something that you could fix right after this presentation. Okay, so the first thing, um, you know, as, as, a, as a business, you most likely have a social media account. You most likely have a Facebook. You most have, likely have a LinkedIn. You most likely have an Instagram. And so your company has one, you have one, and then your employees have some too. And so you have all these different uh, fishing lines that can be in the water and you can, you can utilize those resources to attract more candidates who could be ideal to, um, to, your, to your organization. And so one thing that Daria had mentioned earlier was creating an incentive uh, program for uh, employee referrals. And so one thing that you can do is you can work with your employees, encourage them to share on social media, but also take the extra step of you know, getting a graphic designed so that they can publish it on, on their profile and attract more people that way. Um, the second thing is, um, not in addition to just the employees posting and you posting, are you considering how you are portraying your company online, right? Are you showing pictures of your team? Maybe you have bonding experiences. Maybe you go out for dinners if you meet a quarterly goal. You know, you want to create, uh, you know, a perspective of you, your, your place is a place that people want to work. I mean, you know, it's, you're not just like all the other HVAC companies, but we feel like we're part of a family. We feel like we're part of something bigger and we're working towards something and, and we can see that. And so, you know, these small tweaks on your social media, this will not only help you with attracting, you know, the right team members, but, you know, this is something that your customer will also like to see as well. Tip number two, uh, leveraging your website for marketing. So a big mistake I've seen for a lot of HVAC companies that they, they, they just don't have a careers page on their website. And so if you don't have a careers page on the website, if someone finds you through a Google search, um, you know, maybe they might call in, but, you know, why not be proactive and sell your company on your own website because you're going to have it anyways. And so very similar to social media, you can post pictures of the team, you can share positive testimonials of team members, like how, how they enjoyed experience, uh, enjoyed working for your company. You know, what are some of the benefits that you might offer? What are some of the um, professional development programs that you can take people through? You know, these are things that, you know, anyone would really love to be a part of. It's not just, oh, I'm going to clock in and I'm going to get paid. But, you know, there's something bigger at play here. And so, you know, just to hammer in the point, the last point is your website marketing is not just for potential, but it's going to be for people who yeah. are part of your organization. All righty. And then uh, number three, another way to source uh, candidates. And um, this is not necessarily my favorite way, but this is one of the ways that you can do it is that you can post on job boards. There's dozens upon dozens of them out there. You know, we got Glassdoor, we got Monster, ZipRecruiter, Directly Apply, Google Jobs, Career Builder, BB. There's so many places out there. Um, but if you are to use this, you know, there are ways that you can maximize your reach on some of these platforms. And one of the ways is actually through optimizing the way that your job post is written. And so, you know, for example, let's say that right now you Googled something like HVAC installer job openings in San Diego, right? You type that in, you go to, uh, go to the website and you can take a look at, there's going to be a bunch of listings and there's going to be some at the top and there's going to be some at the bottom. Part of why certain things are ranked at the top have to do with how you wrote them. And so some of the most important places to look for specific keywords will be the job title, the description, and the images. And I'm taking a digital marketer perspective from this. And so, um, you know, that's how a lot of those folks are ranking because that's where they're building relevance. Um, and then last point on here is uh, just the recurring question again. You know, if you do post on, on job boards, you know, do you have a competitive job package? Like I said earlier, it's, it's very difficult to... To, to shine a turd. So you really want to build something that you know, people are drawn to. And that's, that's, just, that's just a key thread with everything we're talking about today. And then the last thing that I wanna say, a fourth option that is working really well is using something called Facebook employment ads. And so most people know that Facebook ads exist and they use that to get customers, but there's also a segment, a special type of ad called Facebook employment ads. There are more regulations and more things that will cause your ads to get rejected by using these, but they are a fantastic way to drive new candidates and on, on demand to your business because you can control your targeting, you can control um, specific types of demographics, you can control your budget, and it's a fantastic way to begin to source. 
And the thing that I like about this as well is that you are able to stand alone from your competitors without necessarily having to compete directly with other HVAC companies. Because if you're on a job board, you got five, 10, 15, 20 other companies that have similar packages to you. But with something like Facebook ads, you can target folks that might not even necessarily be considering leaving right now. They might enjoy their work, but if you're able to catch their attention, they're on social media, you might be able to begin to plant that seed. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that actually hits on my last point, which is you're able to market to a group of candidates who are not actively looking for work right now. And you can turn this on and off, which is why it's really, really exciting that it could be a source for you. Okay. And so with that, uh, uh, you know, what if you could build this system to source those uh, individuals, the right people and the right seats to your organization on demand, you know, what could that look like? And so, you know, kind of what I did here was that I created a, a brief map of what this could look like to help solve a number of the mistakes that you might be facing and also how to streamline things. And so on the left-hand side, we have, let's say it's a technician candidate, right? They, um, you know, they are, you know, on Facebook and they're, you know, they're just browsing, they're looking at a cat videos, I don't know. And so from there, you know, they're gonna be browsing, scrolling their feed and you're gonna have an employment ad set up and so they're going to see it and like, oh, wow, there's a hiring bonus for $3,000. That is amazing. And they're going to click on that ad. And from there, when they click on that ad, there's a system on Facebook where they can submit their name, their number, and their email. And so once that's actually done, what you can do now is you can pass that data to a follow-up system, your customer relationship management system. You know, most people have this for their customers, but what if you had this for sourcing employees? And so what you can do is you can set up these systems that can automatically text and follow up, say, hey, you know, I saw that you clicked on that ad. I saw that you were interested. Would you, you know, you know, please click here to fill out, you know, our pre-qualification form. If people don't complete it right then and there, again, your ads are continuing to run. You can continue to source candidates. Um, and so from there, let's say that someone actually decides to click on your link and they go to the pre-qualification form. And so from here, now you can ask, you know, different things that might indicate to you whether or not someone is uh, qualified. You know, maybe you might ask things such as, um, you know, levels of experience, maybe past certifications. You know, this is, this is not my specific realm of expertise. So if there's specific questions that maybe Dar or Mike might ask, this is where you would do that. And then from there, now in your system, you have, you know, you've been able to, you know, run employment ads on autopilot into a CRM system. They've been pre-qualified and now you have, you know, a list of leads they can more easily um, sift through versus having a gajillion leads. You have, you know, a select group of folks. And so from there, you can do your, the rest of your process, whether that's a phone interview in person, maybe a technical skills test. There's plenty that you can do. Um, I'm not going to speak to that. This is more to the actual marketing and creating a system that can be, begin to drive folks through uh, through your system and into your organization. Okay, so that's the system. Um, and that's about it because uh, we are running low on time. And so if you would like to contact me, uh, again, my name is John Victoria. Uh, you know, love to connect, you know, always love chatting with folks just to strategize, uh, you know, talk ideas and, you know, figure out what can be done to help grow the business. And so my contact information is here, um, john at polyanda.net. And there's my phone number. Feel free to give me a text or uh, give me a call. But yeah, that's about it. So I think with that, uh, we will transition to the last uh, few minutes of this presentation. Um, are there any remaining questions that anyone has? And this can be for uh, any of the speakers. All right, actually, let me check the chat. Uh, let's see if there's anything. <gasps> Okay, um, so uh, Hamza asked, uh, Mike asked about long-term cost containment. How are you able to achieve or manage that if you were working with a PEO? That's a good question, but it really does kind of, again, depend on, upon the, the particular PEO that you're working with. So uh, one benefit that you get from the PEO, PEO is, again, going to be the buying power, right? Because they're buying for multiple, multiple uh, numbers of business and so they, they just have many more people on the plan so they, they're gonna get better rates for you. But on the open market, if it's a PEO that has to go out and shop that every year, they're still subject to the same 
increases that, that every business would get. Now, they'll get you better benefits, but they're not necessarily going to protect you from those increases and sometimes double digit increases uh, every year. So the, the one difference with Insperity, and not to make this too much of an Insperity commercial, but um, because we bring people onto our own benefits platform and we are selective about who qualifies, so we won't bring an underwater welding company onto our platform because it's too high risk. Um, we have very specific companies that, that won't qualify to be on our platform. We're really able to keep those annual renewal uh, numbers down to single digit percentages. In fact, over the last 10 years, we've averaged 3.25% for all of our insurance renewal rates. So significantly lower than what the, the industry average, and we're always going to be lower than the market average. So again, you really have to research the specific PEO and what their model is to know how they're going to be able to contain those costs for you long term. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. And there's another one here. Uh, how does a PEO help us prepare for safety compliance? Um, it's another good question. So again, research, ask the PEO that question. Uh, from us, we provide a safety consultant. So we'll actually do a safety inspection upon bringing a, a new client on in, in most cases, depending on the, on the industry. Um, but we'll even come, you know, do site uh, inspections and, and, you know, uh, do uh, practice runs for an OSHA visit and things along those lines. So you have a, a safety specialist that's assigned to your account. Um, and that's fairly common in, in the PEO industry, but again, not all of them do it. Uh, so you, you need to research and, and ask those questions as you, if, if that's something that's of concern to you. Awesome. And uh, another one, uh, and this might be for Dari, how long of a contract do you have to sign with a consultant? That would definitely be um, something that might vary consultant to consultant or consultant group. Um, for me, I'm very flexible in my contracts. If it's a one day task, I'll do that. If somebody like a three month contract, I'll do that. And all my contracts have, you know, 30 day um, out clause with no penalties or anything like that. Business flexes and I understand that that happens. So, you know, I, I tend to go with the people, uh, go, go with the flow of business and things are working. We can extend the contract. If something's not working, we can end that early. Awesome. Thank you, Dari. And I think uh, I think we'll, uh, this will be the last question because I did want to share with everyone before the end of the presentation, we have a checklist for everyone. Um, let me grab that for y'all and we can show you what we got prepared. Here it is. Share my screen. Okay, so uh, this checklist, uh, this is the 14-point HVAC entrepreneur hiring checklist, source interview and hire top HVAC talent career business. And what we've done is we've added um, different things that you can take a look at when you are looking to source talent. And so, you know, local engagement to source candidates. We have a number of check uh, check boxes here, uh, creating a competitive job posting, and then also advertising your job opening. And then, Dar, if you wanted to jump in as well um, to break anything down, uh, feel free to. Um, no, I think it's a great little checklist and what we would invite you if you're looking through that and you're like, what does that mean? I don't even, I don't have any ideas for that. We are happy to answer questions. We know our, our hour is coming to a very fast close. So all of us are very approachable and have no problem continuing the dialogue. So you can send us an email or, you know, send us a phone call and I'm happy, we're all happy to explain through any of these items. Um, this, uh, this checklist doesn't mean you have to do all of them, but hopefully there's a couple of ideas to spark for you that you've never tried before. And you're like, oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll try that. So, you know, everything you do, you want to track it. And if you do something and you get a flood of good candidates, we'll keep doing that thing. Repeat that. And if you do something and it brings in rah, rah, zero, then don't do that again. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Ridge just posted it in the chat. So I think a few of you might have uh, signed up to the Facebook um, and maybe you're viewing this uh, through the Facebook Live and might not have actually entered in uh, an email. And so if you're interested, um, we will post the checklist link in the Zoom. And also we will post it on the Facebook and any other platform you might see this on so that you can get access to uh, this checklist. Awesome. Well, we are riding the hour. I love to keep things on a tight ship. So thank you everyone for coming to today's presentation. I'm very grateful for your time today. Um, if there's any last remarks from Mike or Dari, feel free to, but um, I'm very appreciative to both of you and everyone for coming today. I'll just echo real quick what Dari said. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You should have our contact information uh, through this. And so 
you know, send an email, make a phone call. We're happy to, to answer any questions we can. Awesome. Oh, Dari, you're muted. Yep. <laughs> I was just saying thank you for spending the time. We appreciate it. Very much so. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.